Man, it has been quite the 24 hours here if you're a Warzone fan because there is a lot of leaks that came out of this new update. We thought we had the future of Warzone figured out. Turns out we may be entirely wrong. Today, we're gonna break down everything you need to know out of these changes and what you can expect from these leaks. There is so much to talk about, so we're just gonna dive into it. But as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. What are you guys hoping to see here for the future of Warzone? Of these leaks, what seems the most interesting to you? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know. As well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're on that road to 400,000 subscribers, and we're gonna keep you up to date with everything you need to know over the course of the next coming weeks as we get some big stuff rolling out for Warzone. And finally, my friends over at G Fuel ended up bumping up Code Espresso to 30% off your entire order. So make sure you check that out. Stay hydrated and stay on top of your game. But that said, let's talk about what's up on deck here. First and foremost, no, none of these are April Fool's jokes. I just realized the date here, so I want to be clear. These are real leaks and data mined items. But as always with this kind of stuff, a disclaimer. We're going to be getting into leaks and spoiler territory. So if this isn't your cup of tea, no worries. But this probably isn't the video for you. Watch ahead knowing that you are entering spoiler territory. So do so at your own risk. Now, like we mentioned in yesterday's update video, we ended up seeing a large update from Modern Warfare and Warzone. Of what was visibly stated by Raven, there wasn't a whole lot. But in regards to what wasn't stated, especially on the Warzone side of things, there's a lot to go over. In yesterday's update video, we did mention the new containment protocol consoles that introduced us to a new way to buy specific items like the bombardment, like the advanced UAV and foresight. And while this is kind of big in terms of functional play, it also kind of is a distraction in a sense to what's being added in on the back end. If you notice in either BR or plunder, you'll jump in and you'll see that there are now rockets being shot all over the sky at the beginning of the map currently in Verdansk. There also is the start of a new emergency broadcast system. These are only small pieces to what is going to be happening over the course of the next few weeks, it seems. Those rockets, while right now seemingly being only world items, a above the height barriers and not being able to be interacted with look to be an indication as to what's to come. That emergency broadcast system though, that's where we take our first step in the direction of pretty interesting. In data mined files discovered by Cod Perseus and Zesty Cod Leaks, we have a few things in relation to the rumored nuke event, including the actual scripts and the rest of the audio files that we'll now hear for the rest of the game going forward. Claiming firstly, this is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. This is an alert initiated by the emergency broadcast system. Cautionary measures are are being taken and level one containment protocols have been initiated. The following areas have been affected and should be avoided, the hospital and the stadium. Now, this one's actually kind of compounding on what's in the game right now, where that current alert cuts off at cautionary measures are being taken and level one protocols have been initiated with no mention of any of the locations to be avoided. But the next few lines actually indicate that we'll be seeing more in relation to the spread and actual spread this time, not just movement of the zombies as evidenced by multiple locations all at once being mentioned. The next alert being, this is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. This is an alert initiated by the emergency broadcast system. Be advised level two containment protocols are now in effect. A perimeter has been established for your safety. The following areas have been affected and should be avoided. The hospital, stadium, and superstore. After that, we end up having, this is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. This is an alert initiated by the emergency broadcast system. Warning, level three containment protocols are in effect. The following areas have been affected and should be avoided. The hospital, stadium, superstore, and the dam. The perimeters are being maintained. And finally, this is not a test. Repeat, this is not a test. This is an alert initiated by the emergency broadcast system. Warning, warning. Containment protocol initiated. Containment is imperative. Protocol must be followed. There is no escape. We are being overrun. This will be our final broadcast. So by that indication, it looks like this will absolutely be taking us to the end of the season. With these events likely picking up more and more steam as time goes on, and if my math is correct, that should give us a bit closer to one upgrade per week, but I actually think that has a couple that would then be left over. So we may see this condensed here and more than one update per week, but we'll have to see. That's still speculation at this point. But also bear in mind that while this happens, Happens, those zombie spawns will increase and give off the ability to get those access cards from zombies crates, meaning that you can end up getting that bombardment streak from the containment protocol consoles. That bombardment opens up on all active zombie zones, so that means that by the end of this, you'll call in a sort of PUBG red zone style extended missile bombardment on hospital, stadium, superstore, and damn. So that means you might be getting some free kills out of this, but naturally this all looks to be leading up to that nuke event with even more audio lines being introduced into the game files. And again, 
spoilers here, but it's a rather interesting dialogue. First, you end up getting your standard announcement VO lines, like the nuclear threat inbound, get out of there now, and nuclear threat is inbound, all forces exfil the area now. And then there's this back and forth one between two operators, seemingly like a radio transmission us players may actually be able to activate, but it's a back and forth between two operators. The first saying, there's too many zombies, we have to get out. The other answering, it's too late for exfil. You can't leave us here. We're still fighting off these damn zombies. And finally closing with, containment has failed. You need to end it. They are still fighting in Verdansk. Give them a chance. So kind of sounding like there's conflict outside of Verdansk as well, which is an interesting spin here, unless this simply means like downtown, but we'll have to wait and see. This all though, of course, goes hand in hand with the previous dialogue that we'd seen data mined. And of course, should all point to that shiny red button on the horizon. Now this may go hand in hand with potentially a new LTM as well. It may be something that leads up to it like the outbreak event, but maybe a containment event or something like that, introducing us to that plague mode that we've seen data mined in the game files as well. But what happens after, that's what gets really interesting and is really big here that we learned out of the last 12 to 24 hours. Yesterday, there was a since deleted and taken down on basically every front early cut of a new trailer for Warzone featuring Jack Harlow, Young Thug, Gunna, and Drusky. I hope I'm saying all those right. I feel like a boomer because I don't really know any of these people. I don't pay attention to the rap game at all, but this was an incredibly early cut of a trailer, likely in transit to a third-party VFX company that leaked it out. It showcases a rough draft of a pre-visual effect version of the trailer, but what is important is where the live action items are still being worked on. There still needs to be effects, things green screened and everything like that. The actual in-game associated sequences are 100% complete and ready to go. This featuring a rewind sequence of Verdansk looking to be set sometime in the 80s in which it flashes by the current stadium and flashes the stadium being initially built, like the initial concrete pouring with some scaffolding and the initial light fixtures being the only thing actually in the sky with no dome associated with it and on the horizon, a much smaller downtown skyline. It features a flyby of the hills between stadium and karst in that quarry area in which it flashes to the Duga radio towers. It flashes panning out from what is damn to what was then an old arched bridge with a dirty hillside leading up to it where that frozen lake currently is, but with zero buildup other than that outside of the environment, though there is still that firehouse up on top of the hill. It flashes through a fly-through of a rail car system like a mine before finally finishing off flying by a small charter jet in the airport, but the airport isn't destroyed. These are all brand new images and sequences that we saw leaked out. And this, in my mind, is 1000% the new map for Warzone, potentially coming as early as season three. But okay, hold up, Jordan. I thought the Ural Mountains was coming. I thought we were getting the fire team maps introduced here into Warzone. Well, that was the initial rumor, though, if untrue, is perhaps two things. One, perhaps the biggest blunder when it comes to everyone misinterpreting information, partially because all the signs were there. It literally is a freak turn of events, but also too, because Raven and Cod may have actually for once done a phenomenal job at keeping things hidden from the public, especially in the back end of things, which we'll come back to in just a second. But we long ago proposed this idea that Fireteam could be the new Warzone map when it was first revealed, when it was first ever talked about that we'd see Fireteam coming pre-launch of Cold War. And there were things like the vehicles, like the parachuting, like the open world environment that really made it seem like this way. But we also postulated that it could be just simply a repurposed version of what was going to be a Blackout 2.0. It's quite possible the Ural Mountains was never going to be the new Warzone map, but instead was actually made to be Blackout 2.0. For those that don't know, I don't think that it's any secret here. I'm pretty sure that it's publicly stated many times. There are plenty of people at Treyarch that really wanted to work on a follow-up to Blackout. And if it was something that each game had its own sectioned BR, like Black Ops 4 had Blackout, Warzone could have been a Modern Warfare exclusive thing, we would have gotten a Blackout 2.0 with Black Ops Cold War. There is a very high possibility that could have actually been the case, where this was developed, but because everything was then invested into Warzone, it became free to play and then a standalone thing that would tie into every Call of Duty, Blackout 2.0 wasn't necessarily needed. So instead of then simply scrapping months and months of work on this larger world, this larger map, it was then put into Fireteam, something that was then a larger player count 
top mode, utilizing larger worlds. But then we also ended up seeing that go a little further, in which we ended up having, of course, Outbreak happen on this as well utilizing a world, a larger universe here than that of just regular 6v6 and 2v2 maps. But the big thing that everybody is holding on to, and rightfully so, is that in the game files, it's designated for these fire team maps with the prefix WZ or Warzone. That's something that we actually still see now even within Warzone. All files within Modern Warfare associated with Warzone have the prefix WZ. But why would that be the case then if it's not going to be something that ends up coming over to Warzone? Well, this actually is a lesser known fact. Blackout, when in development, was codenamed Warzone. So therefore, all things within Blackout even have the prefix WZ. So therefore, again, kind of propping up that theory that maybe it wasn't meant to happen. So by all accounts, then this could just be a simple fact of misinterpretation of the given data. Now, I'm not saying that is true or not, but when you think about it, it does make sense. Pending no major overhaul to the game engine for Warzone, about like 20 to 25% of that proposed Fireteam world would deal with water, something that we can't use within Warzone right now. For whatever reason, we have super soldiers, but we die whenever we touch our toes into water. And kind of compounding on that idea, when we take a look at even the reveal event for Black Ops Cold War multiplayer, we saw a little bit of a mention about Warzone from Miles Leslie, in which he ended up describing it as the evolution of Verdansk. So not necessarily a new standalone map or something like that, but instead the evolution of Verdansk. So therefore, the same basic principles in terms of map design, environments, but a large overhaul of basically everything you see on top of that ground foundation. Andy Robinson, journalist over at VGC Video Game Chronicles, ended up talking about this a little bit further over on his Twitter, in which he says that leaked footage seems to confirm what I was told last year, that the new Warzone map will be an evolution of Verdansk rather than an entirely new design, with many areas remaining with an 80s makeover. So if I'm expecting this with what I've seen from this trailer, it seems like we'll see, of course, some of those staples like downtown, perhaps prison, stay, but perhaps a little bit newer in the grand scheme of things and drastically altered, but potentially again, entirely new areas like the Duga radio towers and also those mines that we can explore. It's a very, very weird situation, but the next couple of weeks will definitely provide a little bit more clarity, but also kind of coming back to it circling around here, why was this something that nobody saw coming in terms of things pointing towards a drastically altered Verdansk rather than a brand new map? And even still, why isn't there anything seen in the game files that points to the next iteration of Verdansk? Surely something that large, that massive would have some breadcrumb trails that are associated with it because that's how game development works. There are always things, even the most minuscule of trails tied together when working with a build and progressively getting towards something. But for this, we don't have any indication of that. And that comes down to a theory that I have that maybe with this new update, we see Warzone have its own standalone boot application that then would have a brand new build of the game upon downloading that. So that means that we can't see these game files because they're just actually not there. They're instead in a different build of the game that isn't yet released in a different application entirely. Now, that part is entirely speculation. I have no clue. It very well could just be something that they held on to it until the very last second. But that also would be something that you may want to keep your eye out for. But that said, that is where we're at here at this, and of course, a lot to digest. We had a massive update for Modern Warfare and Warzone, but realistically, when it came down to the patch notes, not a whole ton was listed. But this kind of explains a little bit of what we see here at this. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this here? Are you looking forward to potentially a prequel to Verdansk? Are you hoping to still see the Ural Mountains? Whatever it is. Feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. So I'm a single thing running all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related, especially as we round into an important couple of weeks here coming up for Warzone. If you're interested, hit that subscribe button. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. I live on both those. If you guys want to check up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.